Welcome back to Cosmo Hoax Anonymous. I am your favorite a mother of three bougie vintage potential bride to be in her white. Okay, <laughs> this is another Love is Blind recap. Before I get started, I need to give a quick shout out to one, my members, because y'all are always doing the damn thing. Two, my subscribers, because y'all are also always doing the damn thing. If you are new here and you're just discovering me because I'm showing up on your algorithm because of Love is Blind, well, hello, <laughs> welcome. Subscribe, join the membership. A special shout out to whoever recommended me Nizarol shampoo, okay? This is not a sponsored video, but I wish it was. Okay, Nizarol, if you see this video, holla at your girl. The scalp is clean. <laughs> Focus, hold on. Do you see a flick or a flake in there? No, you do not, because the Nizarol got me all the way together. My head's not itchy at night, okay? I'm not scratching like I got fleas anymore. The scalp ain't giving candle wax, and it's been like this for the last like three, four weeks. I said, huh? Okay, whoever recommended Nizarol, you did your big one, and I owe you, okay? I owe you. So, without further ado, let's get into this video, because girl, Love is Blind was a mess, just like the rest of the season. We already knew this episode, or the end results were gonna be a mess, so. Let's get right down into this because, honey, what was happening? <laughs> what was happening? When I say I watched the episode a good two and a half times, okay, because I needed to make sure I didn't miss anything. I wanted to make sure I came here today correctly, okay? Because if you notice, I've been kind of MIA. Usually I would have posted by now, but we are like seven, eight, eight, what day of the week is it, Chad? We are a week into March and I haven't posted not one damn video. I am behind. I filmed a video last week, a tea video, and now baby is given iced tea. And it's not even a Long Island iced tea. It's just a regular, regular, uh, Nestle. Okay? It's just a Nestle tea. Take the plunge, girl. Because the tea is cold at this point, but I'm still going to uh, premiere it after this video. So we're going to do a back-to-back, -back, okay? We're going to have fun the entire time. So shout out to all the premiere people. And shout out to all the silent watchers because I know you guys are here. And I wish you guys would speak up more and show your support loudly. But I understand you're introverted, kind of like me. <laughs> I understand. So... Let's get into this, okay, because a lot was happening. The first thing that we see is the conversation between Jimmy and Chelsea. And of course, Jimmy is like, I love you, you're my person, but. And when somebody says I love you, but, it always brings me back to in the early days on YouTube when people disagree with something that you said or did. They'd be like, Bo, I love you, but. Girl, just, just read me for filth and don't add the I love you, but, because I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like I love you but there's no but after I love you okay if you're going to correct somebody or if you're going to tell somebody you know how you feel don't put the I love you but don't you don't need to sugarcoat nothing around here but because I don't sugarcoat anything okay and so when Jimmy said I love you but I said I love you but what I thought that this was a little deceptive because Jimmy was like saying to Chelsea I love you you're my person but I'm not sure where your head is at with like making a decision come decision day. So it was almost as though he was trying to see is she gonna say yes on decision day. Not almost, that's what he was doing. But it didn't make sense and you'll see why by the end of the conversation. So Chelsea answers his question and she's like, we've had some issues. It's been really intense for me, but I can definitely see us working out. And the man laughed in her face, okay? The man scoffed and I said, not the scoff, okay? Let me show you, child. Right now, I can. <laughs> <laughs> the man said, <laughs> like, he was gagged, okay? She gagged him when she said, I can see it. Because at home, we have been like, absolutely the freak not. And obviously, Jimmy was experiencing the same thing that we were experiencing, which is absolutely the freak not. There's no way this is going to work, right? But that's kind of crazy to me as well, because... If you recall, after that huge blowout, Jimmy came back to Chelsea and apologized to her, talking about he went on a four mile walk and cleared his head and decided he wanted her to be his wife. So for him to come back now and say what he's saying to her is a little crazy. So Chelsea's like, I see a future with you, you know? And Jimmy's like, you know, I love you. I wanna be in a relationship with you but I don't wanna to go to the altar. And I'm sat there with my mouth on the damn floor because 
we're not even two seconds into the episode. Like, we are literally at the beginning of the episode, and they're giving drama, girl. I said, it's Broadway. Like, <laughs> it's just drama. And I'm like, Jimmy, if you didn't want to go to the altar with this lady, why are you opening the floor for her to tell you where, where what her answer is going to be on decision day? Why didn't you just text her, call her, tell her something? Like, why did you bring her here on this date? To break up with her? I'm <laughs> this is the equivalent of your job firing you on your day off. Okay? Or if your job calls you in for your shift, makes you work the whole shift, and then at the end of your shift tells you you are no longer employed and you was done for the week. This is the same thing. And I know many of you have experienced that because I have experienced that foolishness. Like, y'all, y'all let me work the shift just to let me go, to lay me off. Y'all could have called me from the crib, okay, or while I was at the crib, before I got up and put this this face on and these clothes and came and sat at your desk and worked like a dog. Like, why are you bringing me out to tell me this? You could have texted me this. This is, you're wasting my time. Unacceptable condition! So, of course, when Jimmy breaks the news to her that he don't want to go to the altar, homegirl is shocked. She shocked and appalled. And I don't blame her. Honestly, I don't. Because like I said, he could have texted her this. He could have told her this off camera. He could have did whatever. And she could have just came into confessional and told us, you know, Jimmy packed up his things and left. Okay. He went to the store for some cigarettes and never came back. Okay. That's what she could have told us. But, you know, he wanted to do his, his soap opera moment. So he had her go on a date with him. Chelsea being Chelsea, she's holding back these tears. She is ready to cry for the 1000th time on the damn show. Now, in this argument, he brings up Amy and Johnny again. And he's like telling Chelsea like, you know, three times since the barbecue, she's brought up the fact that they are the strongest couple. And in my head, I'm just like, why are you concerned about who the strongest couple is? Are you guys on the show to show who the strongest couple is? Or are you on the show to find love and get married? Because why are you concerned with if you are the strongest couple or if somebody else is the strongest couple? Your focus should be your nuptials, your relationship, whatever it is you are working with or working on with your partner. Not who's the strongest couple. It's such a petty, stupid, childish, conversation and so at this point chelsea is clarifying with jimmy what he just said to her and so she's saying so your mind is made up you don't want to go to the altar am i getting this correctly because there have been many miscommunications with these two okay so i didn't blame chelsea for trying to get it clear okay so she's like i just wanted i just want you to make it plain for me you're not going to say yes on decision day. Matter of fact, you don't even want to go to decision day. This is our decision day right here at this table. That's what you're saying to me. And Jimmy was like, sure is. Of course now, she's hot and she's like, I don't get it. Why did you propose to me? I don't, I don't understand. It feels like you weren't even, you're not even trying to get married. And she's like, this doesn't make any sense because we were just picking out our reception music like we were choosing what song we were gonna walk into the reception with so where is this coming from not to mention chelsea tells jimmy you were nice to me so nice to me we had the most beautiful day this was the best day since the whole thing started i said this man was preparing her he was buttering her up <laughs> and softening her up to kill her dreams by the end of the day sometimes you gotta read through the lines right you have to realize this is a little too nice he being a little too nice today he must be up to something you know but why would she think that when she thinks she's going to marry this man so i guess because they had this marvelous afternoon and now they're into the evening chelsea is definitely not expecting this bombshell none of us were really she was like you could have told me this earlier like you didn't have to do all of this and embarrass me on national television so chelsea accuses jimmy of knowing his decision this entire time and wasting her time she's like i feel like you knew you were gonna say no and you wasted my time and honestly that's how i'm feeling too so chelsea is reading him down okay she's reading him like a book and i think it's very obvious that jimmy knew he wasn't gonna say yes come decision date especially after their last argument so i'm not really sure why he 
came back to the house after that argument and was like, let's work it out. When Jimmy apologized and Chelsea wouldn't let it go at that point when Jimmy had come back to the house in the last episode, Jimmy was like, oh my God, let it go. You know what I mean? And she had tended to do that with most of their arguments, which is obviously a very frustrating thing to deal with, but it looks like she should have just been doing that because she was prolonging the argument because she felt like it wasn't really resolved. And so maybe that was her way of trying to resolve it. But at home, that's not how we received it. And clearly that's not how Jimmy was receiving it either. I think it's hard to pinpoint what their issues really were because we're not seeing everything and then the show is edited a certain way and so there were times she would say things in this argument that she was having with jimmy at the table and i would be like hmm we didn't see that side of him so was it edited out or did he just not do it on camera was that intentional or is she just saying these things to make us think that that's how things were going. So when Chelsea says to Jimmy, I feel like you knew this entire time that you weren't gonna say yes and you wasted my time. Do you think Jimmy confirmed or denied? No, he deflected, which was a red flag in itself. I gotta show you this part yet. Like you've known you were gonna say no this entire time and you just wasted my time. You told me two weeks Deflection. ago that you thought- Deflection! And then I took a step back and said, I'm willing to try because I love you that much. Deflected. Didn't acknowledge what she said at all. I said red flag, okay? The man didn't say, what are you talking about? Of course I, I came into this and say wanted to marry you. And yada, yada, yada. He didn't say none of that. He said, last week you said this, that, and the third. Or two weeks ago you said, you said you didn't love me or you didn't want to be with me anymore. And I took a step back. Sir, she just accused you of not wanting to get married. She just accused you of wasting her time. And you wanna talk about two weeks ago? We talking about right now, baby. We talking about right now, okay? And Chelsea is so caught off guard, she doesn't even know what to say, which she always got something to say. So for her to be speechless in these moments is actually hilarious, okay? They, of course, start going back and forth. I don't know if Chelsea's being obtuse, <laughs> but she just is not getting it. She doesn't understand and she's like not sure why one argument that they had should make or break that. And so this is the part where I was like, hmm, we didn't really see this. Is she using buzzwords? So Chelsea accuses Jimmy of or making her having to walk on eggshells because she can't talk to him. He gets really angry you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the term walking on eggshells is heavily associated with narcissism. And so she's throwing out these things and I'm just like, is she subtly trying to tell us that he's been narcissistic off camera because you know, we haven't really seen that on camera, right? We've seen her be manipulative, but we've not seen him manipulate the situation, you know? So we are confused, right? And so I'm like, is she projecting is he the one that has to walk on eggshells? Because we've seen arguments where he's had to walk on eggshells. He's like always the one that's apologizing. She's never apologizing. She's never even accepting the apology, you know? And so I thought it was interesting that she was using some of the terminology that she was using. But when she said this, I was like, okay, if that's been the case, if you are alleging that you've had to walk on eggshells, he gets so angry, you can't even talk to him, you are further proving his point. Like. Why would you want to marry him if that's been the experience for you? And so I'm sat there puzzled like, girl, that don't sound right. <laughs> if that's been the case before the altar, girl, you are getting a free out right now. Why aren't you taking it? To me, she was just proving what he was saying, which was that they have issues that are unresolved and going to the altar right now is not going to solve them. So then Jimmy's like, you are minimizing and condensing our issues into one issue, which is not how it's going. We have about five or six very serious things that we haven't dealt with, and that's why I don't wanna go. But she is hell bent on it being one issue, and I'm sat there like, girl, it is not one issue, and everybody can see that, even Stephen Wonder, okay? Everybody can see it. So we're not gonna pretend like her and Jimmy have one problem, because they don't, they have a multitude of problems well you're condensing it down to one argument but it's like five or six really big issues that like really chomp chomp ate her up <laughs> chomp chomp ate her up about 
So then Jimmy tells Chelsea, you disrespected me and you disrespected my friend that I told you that I had a prior relationship with. By the way, I did see you guys' comments. You guys are saying it's not the blonde that he slept with. It's the dark-haired girl. And I'm sad they're gagged. <laughs> I'm like accused of the blonde of sleeping with Jimmy. The, the blonde ain't slept with Jimmy. Do we Have we confirmed which friend has slept with him? Please leave it in my comment section below. And so while he's expressing himself to Chelsea and telling her, you disrespected me and her as he was talking she cuts him off which is very normal okay she's always doing this he'll be trying to say something get out his thought and she just like ah, no, no, no let me say what i need to say because only what i say matters <laughs> and i'm just like let the man speak girl and then it's your turn like do y'all need a talking stick you know the stick that they pass back and forth so you can get your feelings out and then when you're done you pass the stick to the person let them respond right because chelsea don't even want him to say what he gotta say so as he's talking she's like i need to interfere <laughs> and she starts talking about how it made her uncomfortable with how they're texting and calling all day and so jimmy once again he's in his bag i gotta say jimmy once again he's like okay first of all that with whatever me and her got going on is not even as recent as you and your ex-boyfriend that you still hang out with, that you still call, that you still text, that you still have a relationship with. So why are you on my ass about this girl that I hadn't had sex with one time and I told you about it, I was honest about it because I wanted you to trust me. Like why are you doing this when you have a situation that's similar to mine? And and Chelsea denies the allegations, flat out denies the allegations, okay? But we all heard her say it too. So Jimmy's not making this stuff up. And so she starts gaslighting the hell out of this man. And she's like, no, that's not true. I don't call him. I don't text him. I don't do none of those things that you're accusing me of, okay? She thought she was Keisha Cole. <laughs> but then Jimmy's like, you literally FaceTimed him after we got our phones back, after we got engaged, you called him. You FaceTimed him. It wasn't even a phone call. It was a FaceTime call. Y'all know FaceTime is very, you know. You only FaceTime some people. Only some people get past the FaceTime barrier, okay? So the fact that she FaceTimed this boy, man, ex, whoever, to what, share with him the good news that she got engaged, like it's weirdo behavior. But you ain't got a leg to stand on. If you are doing the same things that you're accusing him of, you don't have a leg to stand on. You can't be hypocritical, have this guy from your past that you've obviously been intimate with, you still have a relationship with him, you consider him your best friend still, and Jimmy can't, it's the same thing. So at this point, y'all is even, and if you're gonna keep that boyfriend, he can keep his girlfriend, and that's just the end of that. Y'all just gonna have to live with it. But of course, Chelsea just continues trying to minimize the relationship that she has with this ex. And then Chelsea goes on to say, you know, was I wrong for bringing it up the way that I did? Yes, you asked me not to bring it up on camera. I brought it up on camera, but my feelings take precedence over your reputation. And so this was another time I felt like she was using a buzzword because she was saying, you want to protect your reputation. You know, she's trying to turn Jimmy into the villain on the show when I don't think that that's ever going to happen. Even if we don't like Jimmy, Jimmy was never giving villain energy, okay? <laughs> he was never giving villain energy. She's pretty much digging a pit for herself because I don't find it genuine when she's saying that he was trying to pr um, protect his reputation. He told her something in confidence off camera. I don't think that we should have ever found out about that, but the girl is unhinged, so we gonna find out about it. Jimmy made the mistake of bringing the friend on camera. He should have never brought her on camera. Jimmy could have told Chelsea on camera and said that that's the situation, but never exposed us to the person, right? He did that and he should have known that it's a possibility that it's gonna come out because reality TV is like that, okay? That's why on Bad Girls Club, you were never supposed to tell your business because they will take it and throw it in your face. The minute y'all get to fight in, they will tell you about, you lied on your dead mama. <laughs> they will tell you, you lied on your dead mama. Like, girl, you don't want to, nobody to know your business. You don't. Now this situation is supposed to be different because this is supposed to be his future wife. And so if he tells her something sensitive, you would think that she would respect it because she trying to, she trying to bag her a man, you know, she trying to bag her a white king. <laughs> so, you know, she needs to just play her, her part and do what she's supposed to do. But she has sensitive information and she told all of us, all of us, she got too drunk and told, she spilled the beans. Now there's riffraff. So of course, once she says, I know you're just trying to 
you know, protect your reputation. Jimmy says to her, it's not my reputation. I don't give a damn about that. It's her reputation. He starts talking about how the, like, you know, now any future guy that she decides to get involved with, like, you know, the guy is probably gonna have a problem with Jimmy and blah, 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 blah. And so Chelsea starts saying, well, boo freaking who, okay? Boo who about your little freaking love triangle. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god this i feel like i'm watching the titanic sink <laughs> like i really watched the titanic sink in 4k because argument was a lot um chelsea was pretty much saying i don't give a damn about her and her future people y'all love triangle and anything you have to say about the situation because you're pretty much telling me that my feelings are invalid but since she has the bestie with the testes that she still talks to i am behooved i'm like what's the problem like what is the actual problem like if you have your bestie and you know you don't sleep with him and and he has a bestie and you know that they're not sleeping together anymore what's the problem unless you're still or you were still sleeping with your bestie up until recently and that's why you're so in your feelings about him having this bestie because if you're okay with your bestie then you should be okay with his bestie of the opposite sex that's just it that's how my brain is working because if you recall in the last video i said well, I don't have a male best friend. And if I did and I had slept with him prior, I'm pretty sure whatever man I'm with is not going to be cool with that. Period. Okay? Like, no no man is going to be cool with that. Me hanging out with this guy, you know, going out with this guy, going on, on little dates with this guy because he's my best friend. No. <laughs> no man is going to be okay with that. And no woman is going to be okay with that if they too don't have a best friend that they know. Okay, yeah, men and women can be platonic. I'm personally not of the um, belief system that men can be platonic with women. Unless, of course, they don't find the woman attractive. And even when they don't find them attractive, a man will take pum pum from anybody, okay? Like, literally, <laughs> if you freaking offer it to them, they're going to take it, okay? It's like free money. Like, they just will be turning it down. So... It, that's how in my head that's how i'm thinking niggas don't want to be my friend for, for for any reason okay there's not been a time a guy just wanted to be my friend he wanted to cuddle he wanted to kiss he wanted to dance into the moonlight girl a man has never wanted to be my friend okay and maybe chelsea's had a different experience than me obviously she doesn't look like me and i don't look like her <laughs> so i don't know maybe her experience was different with men but i, I, I don't have a male friend I don't. It doesn't work. I had a male bestie, and you know what happened? We slept together. <laughs> okay? We slept together. So, now we're not friends. Period. I forgot. Go watch that story time. The eerie story time. Uh-uh, chill. I had a male bestie, and we slept together. Men don't want to be my friend. Like I was saying, Chelsea's energy at this moment was pretty much get over it. Get over yourself. I brought it up. Boo-hoo. <laughs> I don't care nothing about your love triangle, okay? For any future guy that, that she has anything with or anything I, she wants. I know. Sorry, I you guys had a little secret little love triangle. <laughs> exactly. Like, that makes me reluctant that. to tell you things, and that's a true problem. And that's what you keep bringing up. So keep going. Keep going. What else do I do that you can't see yourself marrying me for? Because <laughs> all I'm saying, I can't fathom marrying you after that. My, <laughs> I tried. Listen, Jimmy's talking about both sides of his neck, but at the same time, he's not wrong. So... He's like, you know, at the beginning of this conversation, he's talking about, I want a relationship with you. So he was making it sound like, even though I don't want to go to the altar, I still want to marry you. Now, by the middle of the conversation, he's like, I can't even fathom marrying you. That's a big word. If somebody tells you they can't even fathom something, <laughs> they can't even fathom it. Child, he's in disbelief. Okay, like, he's like, no, there is not, a, there, there is nothing under the sun on god's green earth that could make me want to marry you at this point he pretty much saying that 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 argument is the straw that broke the camel's back i think when he doubled back after that argument it's because when he signed up for the show he wanted to leave with something okay he's like i'm leaving here with something but as time went on he realized i can't leave with something but my dignity so jimmy's like to her this is a true problem because you can't keep your mouth closed and if i can't trust you baby ain't no relationship and i agree with this 100 percent. keep in mind we are only eight minutes into this episode and that's including the freaking recap which was extra long because it recapped the entire damn season so we we really like only five minutes in to the episode and all this is unfolding 
So at this point, Chelsea's like, I feel like this is an excuse. I'm gonna need you to step out of delusion for like five minutes and actually pay attention to what's going on around you. Like, <laughs> there's no reason for her to be acting like, one, this is the end of the world, but two, she didn't see this coming. So when she says it's an excuse, he says no. She then again brings up being clingy, or when he called her clingy, and how he no longer wanted to have sex with her. So she asked Jimmy, should I have broken up with you the night that you called me clingy? The man said yes. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> I said, what? So if that's the case, why didn't you just break up with her, Jimmy? Like, why didn't you just break up with her? You didn't want to be the bad guy? Like, I don't understand. I think they were both trying to not be the villain, and they both just ended up being each other's villain, but not the seasoned villain, you know what I mean? So then, apparently Jimmy thought he was Portia from Damn Housewives because he was like, who said that? <laughs> What, what are you talking about? When did I say that? And I said, Jimmy, you most definitely told her that she is the one that initiated the sex and you didn't even really want it, okay? Which, to be fair, is because she tried to throw the sex in his face and then it backfired. So, again, I am not seeing Jimmy as the narc in this situation that Chelsea is trying to paint the narrative now that he has been hard to deal with, you know? I'm not seeing that. But like I said, we don't get to see everything. So anything could have been happening off camera. So when Jimmy asked Chelsea, when did I say that I didn't want to have sex and you were pushing it on me? When did I say that? Chelsea is looking at him like, I know you lying. <laughs> She's giving him this look like, are you kidding me right now? Like, you know you said that. Like, why are you doing this, you know? And so maybe Jimmy genuinely forgot, but I don't think so, Chad. You know you said that, sir. Chelsea Chelsea goes back to, I can't believe you're throwing in the towel after one issue. And so Jimmy is again like, it's not one issue. And I'm screaming at my TV too, girl. It's not one issue. Like it's multitude, it's many, it's a plethora. It's a gang of issues. Like why does she think it's only one issue? Why is she trying to create the narrative that it's only one issue? Like she's stuck on the fact that he had sex with his friend and she's just not seeing anything past that. Okay, yes, that's one of the issues that they're having. But then what about the issue that she's claiming she's having where it's like walking on eggshells being around him, you know? If those are genuine concerns that she has, then she would be like, I need to rethink this marriage thing too because that's just not an environment you want to have darting your marriage off. Y'all are supposed to be in the honeymoon phase. Y'all are supposed to be in the nothing is wrong with the relationship phase. Y'all are not supposed to have the problems that you're having. When I do my makeup, even though I barely have any makeup on, when I do my makeup, my phone don't want to unlock for me, but my iPad always does. So weird. Anyway, so when Chelsea is saying dealing with your issues or having issues is marriage, she's like, that's marriage, that's marriage. And I'm like, girl, no the hell it's not. <laughs> no the hell it's not. The way that she and him are handling things is not marriage. Yes, you're gonna have your problems. Yes, you're gonna have your arguments and your, you know, disagreements, whatever. But what she was describing as marriage was definitely not it. So Jimmy starts telling Chelsea, like, I didn't tell the world your deepest, darkest secrets. And she's like, your deepest, darkest secret is that you effed your friend? <laughs> and then he's like, keep throwing it in my face. You just keep throwing it in my face. So it looks like this is something that Jimmy's really sensitive about. And obviously he regrets telling her because now everybody knows. And here's my thing. If Jimmy and his friend never wanted anybody to know about it, they should have just not tried to maintain their friendship because that's not really something that you should be hiding from your new partner. I don't think that that's something that your new partner should not be aware of. If you are still friends with this person, it's deceptive to not tell your partner that that happened. And so obviously it's for his friend and Jimmy to tell their respective partners, whoever their partners are, right? Because Jimmy was concerned about his friend's reputation, but it would be her job to tell whatever guy she wants to get with or is getting with or is marrying, whatever, that she and Jimmy, though they have a friendship still, they had sex together once and never did it again because ill, you know, they didn't like it, right? Or whatever the case is, but they still are friends and it's not weird between them. So don't let it be weird between you and that person. But I think men are so prideful already that it's just not going to 
really fly you know not everybody's gonna be comfortable with that they have to be really free spirited i think to be comfortable with that like sometimes you don't want to look at another person that's been with your person you know what i mean like you don't want to have to experience that it's awkward <laughs> i think that's really where the issue would stem from and not really a jealous issue or anything like that this is the part of the episode where i was like jimmy ate her up devoured left no crumbs okay he ate her and the plate she is throwing it in his face and he's like okay keep reminding me why i've made the right decision so pretty much telling her like this is exactly why i'm not going to the altar you are proving my point and i don't feel bad about my decision that is what jimmy said okay fucking your friend okay continue to it in my face what? continue to remind me why i'm making the right decision again. it's already listen eight chomp Sucked it, the, the, the grease so off his finger. I hopeful for us. <laughs> I have to rewind it because... <laughs> I have to rewind it because when I watch this, I'm like, oh my God, he gagged her so bad, she didn't even know what to say. Like, he actually left her speechless when he said that. She was like, listen, and had nothing to say. And when somebody says, listen, and says it has nothing to follow up, talking about, I was so hopeful for us. Girl, shut up. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm not on either one of their sides, but you be eight. Your deepest, darkest secrets is fucking your friend? Okay, continue to throw it in my face. Continue to remind me why I'm making the right decision. Oh my god! Sorry. Listen. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I was one more so time, one more time, one more time. <laughs> I was so you hopeful. You broke my Your deepest, darkest secrets is fucking your friend? Okay, continue to throw it in my face. Continue to remind me why I'm making the right decision. Again. It's hey, right. Listen. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I was so hopeful for I us. Was so one more time. Oh my god, I can't. Your deepest, darkest secrets is fucking your friend? Okay, continue to throw it in my face. Continue to remind me why I'm making the right decision. Again. It's already... Listen. Silence of the lambs. <laughs> I was so hopeful, hopeful for us. <laughs> Woo! Netflix is their big one! That is good golden television! Oh my god. Ate her up! Clean the plate! Maybe they gave him curry and roti. They gave him a meal and he ate it and left no crumbs, baby. That was good TV, okay? I, we never want to see anybody getting their heart broken. But baby, I was not rooting for the couple to make it to the end. I wasn't rooting for them. I'm so happy this happened. And it's better to find out here than on the altar. Because I think Jimmy knew if he did this on the altar, all hell would have broke loose. She probably would have choked him. <laughs> She probably would have choked him. If he went to the altar and did this, it would have been worse because that's hum humiliating. Putting on your gown and somebody leaves you like runaway bride child. No, ma'am. No, I would be I would be so thankful and grateful that Jimmy, you know, broke up with me before we got to the, to the stage because I'm not doing all that. I'm not. So of course, in true Chelsea fashion, after something like that, what do you think she did? She went and sobbed. She cried and sobbed and she was just crying, Chad. She was out on the side of the road crying. And you know, rightfully so, because obviously that's hard. But what did she expect? What did she expect? But moving right along, okay. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, um, this part of the show because it was very much boring but i do want to point out a few things that happened at the bridal shower ad and amy are the only two brides that made it and of course that means that clay and johnny are the only two grooms that made it and so right now it is time for their bachelor and bachelorette parties ad and amy are both very much drunk and they were having a good old time i love the little tattoo of johnny on amy's arm i thought that was super cute i'm like oh my god where did they get those made those are so fun if i ever throw a bachelorette party ever again probably won't but if you haven't seen that story time go watch the bachelorette party from hell story <laughs> That story is good. Oh my god. If I throw a bachelorette party, I want them tattoos to give to the brides be. But I probably won't be throwing any bachelorette parties on gay because people is ungrateful. Okay? Anyway, AD is asking Amy if her and Johnny have had sex yet. And Amy is like, we've had fun type of vibe. Pretty much saying like they haven't gone there because he's really afraid of like having children too early and blah, 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 blah. And so AD is like, so you gonna buy the car before you test drive it? I personally don't think anything's wrong with that. Not in this day age, child. <laughs> 
You might as well hold down till you're married, child. Don't be, don't be in these streets getting your back blown out, okay? You know, be abstinent, be celibate, save it for marriage. AD is talking to Amy and I found this part interesting because Amy was saying how she's like 98% sure that his answer and her answer is gonna be yes. You know, she's like 2% scared, but she's pretty certain that they're both gonna say yes and she's very excited about that and happy. And so when they were having this conversation, AD wasn't expressing the same feelings. She wasn't actually talking about herself at all. She was pretty much just saying she's so happy for Amy that that's her situation, that she's so certain about it, you know? I'm ready to be Mrs. Grave Sandy. <laughs> She did express her happiness for Amy. And then in confessional, she was like, Amy's a little bit too spicy, so she knows she's lying. She definitely been having sex with Johnny. And I thought that this part was hilarious, so I'm gonna show y'all. You don't gotta pretend with me. <laughs> Ain't no way. That girl is too spicy. She fucking that man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, points were made, okay? I love AD, but I wish AD was a little bit more sensible, but you know what? We all been there, okay? We all been dumb for C-U-M. Now, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't clock this before the last episode, but I realized AD looks very similar to my literal best friend in real life. <laughs> and I'm like, how did I not notice this before? There's something about her face that just reminds me of my best friend's face, so maybe that's why I'm drawn to AD because I just love my best friend so much. Okay, oh my God, I miss you, girl. But, um... She looks like my bestie. Oh my gosh. She's just cute as a button, girl. I just love me some AD, but she looks just like my best friend. Oh my God. My best friend's super bubbly too, Scorpio gang, okay? Um, but yeah, she's super bubbly and like hilarious. She's the funniest person I know. And oh my God, I love her so much and I miss her so much. Okay, we're not gonna cry over her. Oh, the kids are home chaff. How about y'all? Do y'all like to skirt skirt? <laughs> Do you guys like to test drive the vehicle before you buy it? <laughs> Or do you just buy the vehicle and hope for the best Yeah, I say, in this day and age, I would probably buy the vehicle before I test drive it. Just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> That's because I'm a child of God. <laughs> Clay now, at the bachelor party, is talking to his friends. And I was, if I was Clay, I would have such a hard time taking this conversation serious because I'm looking at this man in this hat and this, these glasses and I'm just like, sir, <laughs> can we get an outfit change? Like, you guys are having a serious conversation and the man just looks goofy to me. Oh, look, it's paused right on him. Like, imagine telling this man anything. Why is he dressed like this? <laughs> Let me see. Speaks, like, the sex has been good. Like, the, the chemistry has been good. Like, you know, in terms of her just coming into my space and, like, just being comfortable, that's been perfect. It's just like best friend vibes. Like we ah. just love each other. Me, 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 me. That's all I hear. Me, 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 Okay. But the man in the glasses was sending me into orbit. The whole time I'm watching, I'm praying to God, like, Lord, please help me with the blinking and the nodding. Clay blinks and nods so much, like literally just like blinking and blinking and nodding. <laughs> I'm like, I need I'm sorry. It's distracting for me. I just need him to stop blinking so damn much and stop the damn nodding. Maybe he has a tick, girl. Maybe I should just shut up. I don't freaking know. But it's excessive. Like, it's excessive blinking and nodding. If I was AD and I was, like, in a room with Clay, talking to Clay, and he was doing all that, I would have to address it. I'd be like, are you okay? Like, is there a reason that you blink so much? Or is it, like, a nervous reaction to something? Like, or when he's trying to stay awake? Like, I don't freaking know. Is he bored? Girl, he just be doing too much blinking, too much nodding, okay? So then him and Johnny get to talking, and he pretty much tells Johnny he can see himself getting married to AD. Sir, your wedding is tomorrow. What do you mean you could see yourself getting married to AD? Your wedding is tomorrow. The verbiage is wrong. And then he does a cheers to Amy and AD. So they cheers and they act like tomorrow is going to be smooth sailing. No hiccups. You know, married life. Of course, we end up in confessional. 222. We've changed so much through this process and we really dove in the experiment and like gave it our all and like really Did you play? I dove 100% into it. Clay, I wish you would stop lying to yourself because when did you dive 100% into the damn process? From the very beginning in the pods, you was trying to get AD to describe her bites. If you couldn't marry her if you hadn't seen her, you was on the wrong show from the very jump. Going too hot to handle or something. Like, wrong show. 
wrong personality type, wrong demographic channel, wrong, just wrong, wrong, wrong. He was not made for this show. Okay, so now we are at AD and Clay's wedding day, okay? And Clay single-handedly ran Proverbs 3, 5 into the ground, okay? If you don't know your Bible, you still don't know your Bible. But I can guarantee you, you know this scripture now. <laughs> so shout out to Clay one time for giving the girls a little bit of biblical knowledge, okay? The amount of times they quoted this scripture, he quoted this scripture in this season was like, sir, is that the only scripture you know? Can we get a deeper one? <laughs> Can we get a different one, sir? Yeah, I just want to read this verse if I could, okay? Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will always make your path straight. Yeah. I, I know that's right, Pastor Clay. So boom, it's their wedding day. And so AD tells us the reason that she fell in love with Clay was because he was so real and raw or because he is, sorry, he is so real and raw. And I'm sat there like at home, like girl, we don't see real and raw. We see phony. We see that he seems like he's acting. He rehearses things in the mirror and then comes forth and says them. Like, nothing seems authentic with him and nothing seems real raw and uncut. You know, it seems all overly calculated then she starts listing a whole bunch of things and in my opinion the things that she was listing a lot of them seem superficial we just mesh together so well like almost like perfectly i would say it's Girl. it just fits he makes me feel like i can just be myself i don't have to be all giddy and bubbly all the time i mean you add that on top of the fact that he's so fine superficial and chocolate superficial like, this is really a recipe for greatness. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just like that. Girl, it's fine and chocolate is a recipe for ganache. Okay, ganache. Not a man. Girl. Girl. Every day we stray further and further away. I'm just going to lean not on my own understanding, okay? Because I don't understand this. So I'm going to go lean on my understanding. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Because what's she talking about? She's talking about they mesh together. Like, it just seems superficial, okay? But that's why she fell in love with him, she said. Anyway. And then we pan over to Clay. Clay says that he fell in love with AD because she believed in him. I said, sir, your mama could believe in you. Anybody could believe in you. Chad, believe in yourself. What does that have to do with falling in love with somebody? And so... I was like, yeah, we've definitely lost the plot here. I don't think people know what it really means to fall in love. And I don't think that Clay and AD were actually ever in love. Clay says it hasn't been perfect, but it works for them. And he also says that it's very on brand for them. What that means, I don't even freaking know. I really don't know because it's just like, when I use the term that something is on brand for me, if things go awry on a Wednesday, that's very on brand. <laughs> you already know my beef with Wednesdays, girl. Like, that's very on brand for something funny, strange, weird, crazy to happen on a Wednesday for me, right? That's very on brand. And so when he said that their relationship hasn't been perfect, but it's right for them and very on brand, what does he mean? Like, y'all just met. What is on brand for y'all? Like, I'm very confused. I'm gonna find the clip, chat because maybe you guys can make it make sense. I'm not a perfect guy. And um, everything about our relationship hasn't been perfect, but it's been right for us. It's been very on brand, and that's what I love. And so one thing I noticed, and I played a clip earlier, was that Clay keeps referring to AD as his best friend, or she's like his best friend, which in most cases, this would be a good thing. You know, you know, my mom always told me when I was younger to marry your best friend. And so your partner should definitely have those qualities but there should also be a romance there. There should be a love there on top of the friendship. You have to be friends with your lover. It's just, it just goes hand in hand. But the way that I saw their friendship or the way that he talks about it makes me feel like it's just platonic. He doesn't want to be with her because she's not his type. She got the body, but I don't think he likes women that are dark skin. And I don't think he finds AD attractive y'all said he's Guyanese which explains a lot chow <laughs> clay being Guyanese explains a whole lot you know these Guyanese men chow if you know you know okay the island men period but the Guyanese men chow trouble maybe he is a colorist can't accuse him of being one so then back at AD's room 
We see her mama come in dressed like the first lady. Somebody's first lady, okay? She looked like the pastor's wife. <laughs> and I was all here for it, okay? She got the hat on tilt and she looked real cute. And so she starts telling AD that she met Clay's mom and how lovely she is and they got along just great. And she starts talking about how if she could have picked a mother-in-law for AD, she would pick her like every single time because she's just that great. I thought that that was a weird thing to say, but who am I? <laughs> who am I? You know, how did you guys feel about that statement? Like, did you feel like it's getting weird? AD's mom was just doing too much. The same way she was saying Clay is a man, a good man, Savannah, like weird. At least the mamas were getting along because sometimes you got mamas that don't get along now. Romeo and Juliet, okay? You know, them families were not, <laughs> they weren't getting along. Best that the mamas be getting along and you know, I just have really great spirits. AD's sister asked about if she thinks Clay is gonna make a great husband and father, I think. And she was like, of course, like he's already such a protector and a provider and all these things. And she's like gassing up Clay as she always does. And when she's saying that he's a protector and a provider, I'm there sat there thinking like, ma'am, he don't even come home. He can't protect you, he not home. He can't provide, but what's he gonna do? He transfer you the money, girl? Like that's not providing because provision isn't always money. Provision is a safe space. Provision is being present. And Clay hasn't done that because Clay been MIA. Clay been over there with the jet skis when he needs to be at home. Clay's making up excuses of why he can't come home. Where is the protection in that? Where is the provision in that? I know I'm preaching a word, okay? <laughs> if you thought you were gonna come here and not get a word and not leave fulfilled, girl, you were wrong. Every single time you clock in, girl, that's what's gonna happen. I'm just talking about love is blind, but you won't get a word today. You gotta know that that is what true provision is or being a true provider is. They gotta provide in every aspect, not just the financial, right? So it maybe in AD's mind, that's what providing is because that's what we've been trained to think that provision, providing for your family is monetary, but it's not. It's monetary and it's emotionally, and it's mentally, and it's spiritually, and it's physically being a provider, period. Hallelujah, okay? So when she said that, my first thought was, girl, he don't even come home. So he can't protect you, and he can't provide for you. Nonetheless, she thinks that he would make a great dad and husband. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> If you say so. And so the next part really kind of gagged me because Clay's brother asked him how he is mentally right now if he's happy. And Clay's answer to me didn't necessarily go with the question because maybe it's just the way you interpret it, right? But when his brother asked him that, I thought the brother was asking him in respect to AD, not in respect to himself. But as the episode went on, I realized something. And I'll get to that when I get to it. How are you mentally? You feel like you're ready for this right now? Like, I am at peace with, I'm happy of the man that I became, like, through this process. Like, yes. I, I came from one place of just being like, there's no way that I can even fall in love. Like, I felt like love was just so distant from me. And, like, I found love in the pods. Like, to me, that's a, a big deal, Nate, because you know me. Ciao. Joe, when he said he's at peace with the man that he's become throughout the process, I said, what? He said he didn't think he would find love or fall in love. So why did you come to the show? Why are you here? The whole purpose and premise of the show is to find love and get married. What do you mean you came here with, the, with a doubtful mindset that it's not even gonna happen for you? Baby, time waster 101. If you came on the show, and you don't think it's gonna happen for you, baby, it's not happening for you. Just like it didn't happen for Clay. Cause clearly, well, we didn't get there yet, chat. We're gonna get there. What I gathered from watching this was that the men that he was talking to, just like me, they weren't picking up what he was putting down. They were not buying it, okay? He was giving them the $100 million in their hand and they were not buying it. The looks on their faces said it very much, I don't buy what you're saying, but I'm gonna go with you cause you're my brother. Yeah. But their little cheer sings, I'm not above you, I'm not below you, but I'm right there with you. That's them, they right there with them. They just agreeing, okay? They are touching and agreeing on Proverbs 3, 5. 
<laughs> they're telling you to agree on Proverbs 3 5. Girl, they weren't buying it. They know he's full of it. Just like we know he's full of it, right? When his friend or brother asked him this question and he responded the way he did, all I was hearing is again, me, 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 me. The I'm happy with the man that I became. Sir, this is not the man that I become show. This is the Love is Blind show. So you're on the wrong show, girl. And in case you missed it, <laughs> in case you missed it, let me show you what I'm talking about with this blinking business. It's a two-man relay. Y'all have y'all strengths, blinking. right? Yeah. I think that's really blinking. how you got to oh think God. about marriage Who blinks that and Oh, my team. God. Listen, and that's the whole thing that he's blinked way more times, okay? Way more times, okay? The blinking is was has been excessive the whole season. I don't know why I had to pick up on it, but my brain just, it lives red free in my head. <laughs> I go to bed thinking about Clay blinking at night, like, <laughs> listen. I can't take it, okay? So since I experienced that, y'all have to experience it too. Clay is a Virgo, but he very much gives me Leo energy. He's always talking about what AD does for him and for his confidence and his self-esteem and how she boosts him up. And then he even likens his wedding day to the finals of a graded test paper and says he's here to ace the test. And I don't think this is the first time that Clay likened his relationship with AD to something trivial like this, but it's very telling and problematic. That being said, I forgot to mention something, hold on. Big red flags, and I have to mention these because he mentioned it more than once in this episode alone, that this process has helped him to be more emotionally vulnerable as well as more empathetic. If you are empathetic, you don't have to be taught to be empathetic. It's something that comes to you natural. You're naturally gonna have empathy for somebody if you're not a psychopath or a narcissist. You're, you don't need this process to teach you how to be more empathetic, you know? Therapy, however, can open your eyes to that. And what I started gathering throughout watching this entire season was that Clay was needing therapy and use the show as his therapy, which is not okay. You were never ready to be on Love is Blind. He was never ready to be on Love is Blind. He was ready for therapy because he's got a lot of demons, a lot of trauma and unresolved issues that he needs to go talk to the lady about, okay? Not come on Love is Blind with your baggage and get somebody to fix it for you. Like AD said, she's a fix a hoe. And this was a hoe that needed fixing. The thing is, as much as AD is a fix a hoe, there's one hoe she's not fixing, and it's herself. And I'm using the term lightly, okay? I'm just, it's a pun. Okay, I'm not calling AD a hoe, but you can't be a fix a hoe and not fix yourself first. So that's a big problem that we have on this show because when I watch these shows, Love is Blind, Married at First Sight, Girl, even 90, especially 90 Day Fiance, I can always tell why people have decided to go this route, why people have decided I'm gonna go the unconventional way to find love. Their issues start to come out to the surface like right away. Like even on The Bachelor, the issues start to come out immediately. There's like no denying it, no hiding it. Oh, so this is why you've been single for 12 damn years. <laughs> You're crazy, you need a therapist. Okay, that's what it gives, sorry, not sorry. Anyway, moving right along. 80's mom ends up gifting her like a family heirloom that was gifted to her from her mother that was gifted to her from her mother. So this is coming from 80's great grandmother. And at first I thought 80's mom wanted her to put it on and I was like, no, okay, because I personally, if it was my wedding day and my mom gave me like an heirloom and it didn't match my whole wedding aesthetic and she wanted me to wear it, I would be like, having to have a conversation with her. Mom, you know I love you, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not wearing that. <laughs> I have my jewelry picked out already. I'm not wearing that. You know, but that's not why she gave it to her. And so I was relieved. But like, are you guys like that too? Like, would you wear it to appease your parent? Or would you like tell your parent like, you know, I love you. I love the jade necklace, but I don't think that I can wear it today because I had already planned to wear something else. I could keep it on me. Okay, I got a pocket on my wedding dress. I'm putting it in the pocket so you know, Great grandma and grandma's here with us, you know what I mean? Like, but I ain't gonna wear this on my neck now. And I hope you're not offended, mom. <laughs> but my moms are like that. But there are some overbearing moms that are like, you have to wear it. Okay, I've seen some moms give these people some ugly, ugly old vintage heirlooms. <laughs> like, girl, I can't wear this. So I was happy that her mom was just gifting it to her because that's really nice. But the other side of that is also, did great grandma, grandma, and your marriage work out? 
Because this heirloom might be the problem. This heirloom might be cursed, girl. I ain't taking this. No, you can keep it, mama. <laughs> you can keep it because y'all all got divorced. Okay? Y'all all got divorced. Are you going to give it to me? This is not a good tradition that we're passing down now. We might need to throw this jade out. <laughs> no, but um, it was a very nice sentimental moment between her and her mom. So I did actually quite like it, but that's just where my brain was going with it. At this point, we're jumping back and forth between Clay's uh, dressing room and AD's dressing room. So now that she was gifted this and like her and her mom are having their little moment, we jump back over to Clay and who pops up but the cheating bastard himself, Clay Daddy. Okay, I shouldn't have called that man a bastard. I am so sorry. But we end up meeting the man of the hour, the man that Clay has tried to mold himself after, which is his daddy. And so when his daddy pops up, he says to his dad, I didn't think I was gonna see you. I said, no. Now you didn't think you were going to see the daddy on the wedding, girl. <laughs> now you didn't think you were going to see your dad. And you invited him to the wedding. You didn't think he was going to come. Uh-uh, child. I said, Clay is looking and seeking approval from his dad. And I think it's really important for him. Which is another reason he needs to go to therapy. Now, when Clay's dad walked in, Clay was actually sat there crying. And I'm like, what the hell is this Negro crying for? Why are you crying, sir? Why are you sat here in tears right now? He was literally in there by himself wiping his tears away when his dad showed up they started having a little conversation his dad like helps him get his tux on when i saw his dad my first thought was oh yeah he looked like a cheater <laughs> bald men you're not beating the allegations the bald men of the world are not beating the allegations if you know a bald man you know he cheated at least once okay and now i love a good bald head his dad starts talking about you know track and field i guess because his dad used to do track and field his dad starts talking about how he was so good at track and how he was almost in the olympics and he's talking about himself, you know, very much me, 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 me energy. I said, oh, this is what I want to talk about. This is where Clay gets it from. Everything is about him. It is Clay's wedding day. Why are we talking about track and field? At that point, I saw where Clay gets it from. Why he's so self-absorbed. And most cheaters are self-absorbed. Otherwise, they wouldn't be cheating. He was trying to, I guess, give Clay like some kind of analogy. Why he brought up the track and field. It was just weird to me. And then he starts giving Clay this crazy advice that you should not be giving on somebody's wedding day, okay? So Clay's father starts telling Clay about his mom so clay's grandma okay so clay's dad's mom and how she always used to say to him treat your wife well and do good by your kids and then followed up by saying nobody had to tell him to do right by his kids because that came naturally again this is the wedding day what kind of advice is this because when he's saying this i'm like so are you suggesting that Clay live his best life? Don't worry about his wife? Like what, what, what was the point of this advice, right? He followed it up by saying that Clay needs to trust himself about what is right and what is wrong. And then tells Clay not to listen to outsiders. I'm like, sir, grandma was an outsider. She was outside looking in telling you to treat your wife well and do good by your kids. And you gonna sit here and tell this man this very advice on this wedding day and say, don't listen to outsiders. But grandma was an outsider telling you great advice and you didn't take it because you was out there dogging your wife and you were dogging your child because you're bringing your child and exposing him to the cheating lifestyle and normalizing it and created a monster. And this is what I mean by created a monster. So this Instagram account commented on a post by Spiritual Word and the girl's name is T dot a dot m underscore i am and she is alleging that she dated clay and she was with him for three years of her life and he was essentially demonic okay he is problematic and she's exposing him in these comments you can pause to read obviously not during the premiere but once the video is done you can scroll back and read the comments for yourself and see that this was obviously all for TV, but we clocked Clay's behavior and the red flag, so I'm not surprised by anything that this young lady is saying. Because track was always my thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, high school, all American, college, all American, yeah, yeah. United States. Like gassing himself uh, up. Olympic teams. Yeah. I came as close as the Melrose Games, yeah, yeah. and I pulled that hamstring. Yeah, I remember it. Totally. Yeah, but outside of that, I was just, me personally, I was living vicariously through you. Yeah, yeah. It's my wedding day. <laughs> 
Why are you telling me about your track and field that you made it to the Melrose Games? Sir! Here's what your grandmother always said to me. Mm. Treat your wife well. Be good to your kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't have to tell me to be good to my kids. Yeah. That came natural. Yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes to right and wrong, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter huh? if everybody else is like in your ear telling you, oh, do this, do that. Mm -hmm. You got to trust yourself. Yeah. Like, is he suggesting, is Papa suggesting that there was people in his ear telling him to do wrong? Because he didn't say that. He just said, he just talked about doing right and then went on to say, don't listen to people. <laughs> so... I was left confused okay I said the devil is a liar I was left very confused and I said this is confusing information to get on your wedding day when you're already confused clay goes in his confessional now and he says how you know him and his pops haven't really had many sentimental conversations and he poses the question you know were you ever really in love but we don't hear clay ask his father this we only hear clay ask the camera this so i think that clay is not there yet he's not ready to even ask his father these questions because he hasn't done the work he needs to go into the bush and weep call ianla and fix his life before he ruins a few good women that's what needs to be done expeditiously and so this brings me back to the point that i made before clay used this show as a therapy outlet and I think that that was wrong on so many levels because how do you know that you need therapy and you end up on love is blind did you think that getting married was gonna solve your problems and so this next part a lot of people probably didn't catch it but I caught it because like I said I watched the show twice and when I watched it on the second time is when I caught this clay is talking to his dad and he says this and, you know ad you know she was an amazing person that i connected with was. through this process she was an amazing person when you start talking about somebody in the past damn tense like they dead oh it's a red flag what do you mean was ad is still alive and well and she's a matter of fact in the next room get her wedding dress on ready to marry this man he's talking about ad was uh-uh child the red flags were flagging okay so I'm sat there stressed, <laughs> even though this is my second bear go around watching the damn show because I know what's coming, but at the same time, I was sat there stressed because I'm just like, no matter how many times you watch it back, you just know this girl's gonna be so hurt. At this point, his father turns into Dr. Seuss real quick, okay? <laughs> and I don't know where this poem came from or whatever this spoken word was. I don't know if the daddy wrote it himself or what it was, but he started saying it. If y'all know it, tell me where it came from, chill. Because I don't know why he thought he was Dr. Seuss. If you think you're beaten, you are. Yeah, if you, you are. think you dare not, you don't. Mm. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't, yeah, right? Yeah. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. For out in the world, you find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. Mm -hmm. If you think you're outclass, you are. You gotta think higher to rise. You gotta be sure of yourself. Daddy trying to get a job. Mm. The daddy and Clay are one of the same. Because daddy, for sure, told himself before he got there today, knowing he gonna be on camera in his little dapper suit, okay? He said, I'm gonna give them a show, okay? They giving cameras, lights, and action, I'm gonna give them Broadway. <laughs> he thought he was Dr. Seuss, Jay-Z. Uh, he thought he was Nicki Minaj, okay? Like, where'd he come from with that? I said he wanted to make sure he got his 15 minutes. And he did. If you decide to be on this show, and you are in the pods, do me a favor and ask the person on the other side of the pods how many blinks would they say that they do a day, okay? <laughs> ask them how many blinks that they would say they do on average per day. 80s red bottoms, very cute. They looked amazing. She looked amazing. Her dress fit way nicer, way better this day than it did when they were doing the try on haul girl girl the try on was a mess i said that dress is plain but on wedding day she gave legs and hips and body body girl she did the oh she looked good she looked so damn good but the updo dreadful when you have a sew-in and your tracks are from side to side what's that song ariana grande <laughs> when your tracks are side to side you can't do no updo like that. Her hair looked crazy to me. And the makeup, even worse. Them dirty ass eyelashes needed to come off. I don't know where she got her lashes done. I guess they are permanent because, or semi-permanent, sorry. Because they were the same all season. But 
to me, one side looked like it was lifted the whole season. So I don't really understand how she didn't remove these damn lashes. Did she put them on with lace glue? Like, what the hell? Yeah, not a fan of 80s makeup for the wedding day. Her makeup looked the same way it did all season. So I was a little annoyed with that because I'm like, it's your wedding. You know, hire a makeup artist. Do, to have somebody do your makeup, girl, real nice, real cute for the wedding. Where did the budget go? Did she spend it all on the dress? I don't know, but her makeup was not nice for the wedding and her lashes were dirty. You don't wear the same lashes on your wedding day that you've been wearing all damn season. She needed to take them off and give us something more flirty, less exaggerated, okay, less dirty. There was makeup crusted all up in them lashes and I was just like, no. Let me see if I get a shot of the dress for you guys. Hold on. <laughs> ah! Oh my God. Yes. It's so, down. Wow. Look at her. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Gorgeous. Beautiful. Look at that shape. That's a perfect wow. fit. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look good. She looked amazing. Oh gosh, yeah. The dress was dressing. Okay, and it definitely didn't wear her. She wore the hell out of that dress. If you're gonna do an updo, you gotta do a wig. You gotta do a wig. Okay, you gotta get the... You gotta get the six by 13 inch um, lace frontal so that the sides of your hair on the updo are flat. If you have a sew in, the updo is not gonna look right. I'm sorry, that's just the rules of the game. You can wear a wig for one day, cause you know AD's leave out was looking crazy all season. So I wasn't surprised that on the wedding day that this was the hairstyle, but she should have like, if she wanted to do an updo, she should have had more hair down in the front with the, the curls so that it would distract from the sides of her hair looking lifted in a way. I don't know how to explain it. If you know, you know, okay? And so now we're gonna get into the moment of truth, the moment of embarrassment, okay? Clay's mother walks him down the aisle. She also lets him know that she will support him no matter what his decision is, okay? So if he says yes on the stage, if he says no on the altar, then that's what it is. He's clearly nervous, and once he gets on stage, he asks the audience, how am I looking? You know, like, what do I look like? And they're all telling him he looked good, and then he had the audacity, nerve, and gall to ask, do I look like a husband? Why are you asking that question if you know that by the end of this, you're not gonna be one? <laughs> Messy freaking boots! I'm looking, I'm looking good. You look amazing. Look like husband. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go where? To hell? What the hell? <laughs> Let's go where? I'm looking like a husband. A husband? This entire scene is the proof and the evidence. It's all the proof and all the evidence that we need that we don't need season seven of Love is Blind because it's giving MTV's ridiculousness, okay? Call Rob Deerdeck, okay? It's giving ridiculousness at this point. If you recall, from season one downward, we just had less and less and less people making it to the actual altar. Usually, what is acceptable is one couple not making it to decision day. But to have like more than half of the people break up before decision day and have scandals before decision day is crazy. Because there are scandals that I did not talk about. So before I even continue with this situation, let's talk about those scandals. Firstly, we had Jeremy was freaking engaged, okay, engaged to be married while he applied for the show, living with the girl and her son, okay, crazy. Then on the show, he, he scandaled, stayed out till 5 a.m., and then ended up with Sarah Dam Ann, scandalicious. Then we had Kenneth, who I clocked very early on. I said, this man is Jay, okay, very Jay. Okay. He's, he don't like women's. Okay, he's not delivered. <laughs> he don't like, he like, man, okay. I could tell that from the jump. And I was not about to get fooled, nor bamboozled. It was very plain and obvious to me. And if you watch back from my very first recap, you will see, I clocked it. And I'm like, mm, he's not, he's not that into Miss Brittany now, okay. That's a scandal. Cause you're problematic. If you know you are into men and you are on Love is Blind, bamboozling the women and, and, and wreaking havoc in their lives and then have the audacity to say that you're too much caliber of a man for her? Not Miss Sweet Britney now. Then we had uh, apparently Trevor also had a girlfriend and she she exposed him. Not Chelsea's other connection. Girl, it was scandal after scandal after scandal. The season was ghetto as hell. And then we get to, of course, this guy. It's now AD's turn to, here comes the bride. And so when she was walking herself down, 
it was such a reminder that oh my god her father just passed away and i was so like wishing hope and praying that her uncle a cousin child a friend one of clay friends somebody you know walk her down the aisle but that obviously didn't happen she came down the aisle by herself and as she came down the aisle she was super giddy kind of nervous excited she was a ball of emotions coming down the aisle and so when she gets up there he tells her you put that ish on like you look good girl and so they are both a big teeth grinning okay like <laughs> <laughs> and so they're complimenting each other and he is again with this let's go like he's excited oops now i'm just scratching myself he's excited he about to have a whole wife right like that's the energy he's giving like this is his wedding day he's ready he's here let's do this and then it's time for him to say his vows he starts saying his vows and he pretty much you know starts thanking her again red flag but he starts thanking her for everything that she's done for him through this process and then when it was her turn I was overly annoyed because she was very giddy and doing too much like like girl <laughs> girl please time and place girl but she was so excited like she wasn't even using words sometimes and when she was saying her speech I'm like next time bring a piece of paper girl because this is ghetto okay during her vowels she stroked his ego like she always does to the 10th freaking power and i was just like mm-mm mm -mm, girl pack it the frig up it was insanity i want to give you guys a visual because baby if somebody does this at their wedding i'm probably walking out <laughs> I'm, I'm probably walking out and by the way clay pulled a freaking what's it called jimmy the day that he met chelsea out them pods and he realized she's a liar clay said i can work with that i said huh i was telling you i said i need to know what you look like before i propose but you came through, you popped out, I saw you, and I was like, I could work with that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Am I reading too much into it? Lighthearted, it's lighthearted, and I'm not. <laughs> a man sees me, and he says to me, I could work with that. Underwhelming. Lose my number. Don't talk to me. If you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Go ahead and free yourself. Because you're not going to say to me you can work with that. Okay? You're not gonna say that to me. Now when I look this good. <laughs> now I know if I I can work with that. Huh? What you mean you can work with that? This is not indeed, sir. <laughs> this is not a job offer. I can work with that as crazy. I can work with that as crazy. Like, I can work with that is like the epitome of this is not exactly what I want, but I'm gonna make it work. Okay? That's what I hear when I hear I can work with that. Like not too shabby okay child not me uh-uh anyway but that's not what i want to show you what i want to show you was her on stage doing that. okay i said you're not making a stallion you are beautiful you are intelligent you're important you are authentic how personable and fun you are like i love that we can just yeah, yeah. <laughs> i see things in you that maybe you don't see mm -hmm. And those are things that I want to continue to nourish for you because I trust you. Yeah. First of all, I just appreciate. Girl, if you want to nourish something, go buy you some damn lotion, okay? Go get you a meal. Don't be nourishing nothing for this man. He's not that into you. What you talking about? You want to nourish these things for him? Like, that was for his parents to do, okay? What did my mama tell y'all? Come potented. <laughs> Don't come with the potential competent Ted. And I appreciate the fact that we've even got this far. <laughs> I know. And then she's talking like she damn Ian Von Zant talking about, and you put in the work. Ma'am, you're not the lady. You're not the lady. He's supposed to go see the lady. You're not supposed to be the lady. Ciao. And of course, if y'all thought I was lying about Proverbs 3, 5, get it run into the ground. <laughs> Why did the officiant sit up there and talk about some Proverbs 3, 5, child? I said, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot and I will not, okay? As in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Child. The girls in the Discord were like, that's not a marriage scripture. <laughs> there are so many marriage scriptures in the Bible. That's not one of them. No, the scripture is the scripture. The scripture is the right scripture for life. But the way that they used it in this in this show, this season, this season should have literally been called Proverbs 3-5, okay? Love is blind, Proverbs 3-5. <laughs> Proverbs 3-5, okay? 
Ciao. I can't. Anyway. So of course the officiant asked the big question. AD says, I do. And immediately, immediately, I knew that Clay was upset. I knew that he was like, frag, okay? You know when something bad happens and the only word that pops into your head is the F word? Well, not me, chat. You know I'm saved and sanctified. But there was a time, okay? <laughs> there was a time that if something bad was happening, the only word that would come to mind is the F word. See, that's what was written on Clay's face. And how AD wasn't seeing that that's what was written on his face is crazy to me. So she says, I do. And in his mind, he's like, F, 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 like, frag, frag, frag. You know, like, why did she have to say I do? Now I gotta embarrass this girl. I think because of how he acted throughout the season, telling her every chance he got, I am going to cheat on you. I'm probably gonna say no on decision day. I am not husband material. He was warning her, red flag after red flag throughout the season. This shouldn't be a shock to her come this day, but why take it this far? Why not do what Jimmy did and spare her the embarrassment and just tell her straight up, like, you know I'm not gonna say yes to you on decision day, right? However, I feel like because the producers at this point were like grasping for straws. They forced them to go to the aisle. They probably didn't tell AD what was gonna happen. He probably tried to get out of it and they told him, we're gonna charge ya. <laughs> so you ain't got a choice but to go up there and do this and that's probably why he was crying when his daddy came pulled up on him because he knew he was gonna have to do this. Otherwise, he got a fine to pay. I do. <laughs> Look at his face, oh my God. <laughs> He was so stressed. Oh my God. Clay. Watch him, watch him. Oh Did my you God. take Amber? He could not hide his disgust, okay? And I'm that type of person where my face will snitch on me before my mouth ever could tell a lie. So I, that's why I don't be lying, because my face is gonna tell, okay? If somebody asks me if I like something, my face is gonna be already telling them she don't like it. <laughs> so I don't even be trying to lie. Like, so that's what was happening here. And so his face couldn't hide the emotion because as soon as she said, I do, it was written all over his face like I don't. So of course, the officiant then turns and poses the question to Clay and dramatic music starts playing. When the officiant asks Clay a very simple question, he starts going on a speech, which is how I knew this man is not about to say I do, okay? He starts off by saying, This has been the best process. AD, I love you. I don't think it's responsible for me to say Ooh -wee! I do. Ooh -wee! Everybody's face is like, oh, hell no, okay? I done got on my Sunday best. I'm ready to see a wedding, a yes and a yes at the altar, and you are gonna sit here in this lady's face and tell her no? Talking about it's not responsible, sir. It wasn't responsible for you to sign up for the damn show. Now, don't take me being angry, <laughs> because I'm not. Obviously, I never wanted them to end up together, but I also, I'm just mad that the time was wasted, okay, because I, I don't like stupidity. So I'm really just mad at the stupidity of it, not that he said no to her, you know what I mean? I, I'm just a little confused as to why his goofy tail self would sign up for the damn show talking about it would be irresponsible for him to say, I do right now. Talking about he love her and all kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, it was irresponsible for you to sign up for the show knowing that you weren't already ready. The show is not to prepare you for marriage. The show is for if you're already prepared for marriage, you need to find a person to do life with, do marriage with, okay? That's what the show is for, not for you trying to figure out who the hell you are as a person. Wrong show. He's saying he's not ready. And at this point, I'm embarrassed for AD because she's up there like pretty much begging him. She whispers, Clay. She's like, Clay. And then ask him not to do this. And I wasn't sure if she was saying, don't do this, like it's over explaining thing or don't do this, like don't tell me no. Because the last time I checked, she told him no matter what his decision is on decision day, she's okay with it but she wants to do the process how the process is supposed to be done. That's what she told him. I'm not ready for marriage and you deserve the best. And if I'm not ready to give that 100%, I won't do And I know that you will fight for me and we'll let it work. I know, but I, I, I can't say, I can't say yes right now. I'm sorry, Dan. I'm sorry. What the fuck? But why, why does it matter, like, with, this, with the time? Why does that matter? Okay, don't do that. What the hell does it mean? Why does it matter the timeline? Sir, you're on a timeline show. There is a time crunch here. Okay, this is not for people that are not ready for marriage. This is for people that are ready for marriage that want to be 
getting married. You know what the premise of the show is before you sign up. They didn't bombard you with the, the what you're supposed to do on the show. You came in with ill intentions, the wrong intentions. I thought you were going to swindle somebody. It's not working that way. Like, that's what pissing me off. Don't sign up for this show, please. Next season, if they do another season, chow. Please don't sign up for this show if you're not ready for marriage. Because the whole point of the show is to get married. Not to get a girlfriend, not to get a boyfriend, not to get a fiance, to get married, okay? The whole point of the show is for marriage. You don't sign up if you're not ready for marriage. It's not like freaking Too Hot to Handle where you don't know you're signing up for Too Hot to Handle. It's not a surprise what show you're signing up for, okay? This is like if you sign up for uh, Married at First Sight and you get to the altar in your tux, in your wedding dress, and are like, you know what, I don't think I can do this. Which happened this season, by the way, on American, on the American version of the show. And they had to rematch the guy. They never showed the girl's face, so we never got to see who she was. Because obviously, the internet is not a very friendly place. Okay? But why would you sign up for a show where you don't get to see the person until after certain parameters are met? And then kamikaze the whole thing because you are not happy with your pick. If you're superficial, this is not your show. And I'm sick of them not screening the people properly because they want ratings and drama. We want to see people fall in love, okay? But if you guys are not going to have people fall in love because you want to give us the drama, then call the show something else, okay? Of course, AD's mom and sister support her. And, you know, they walk her out. AD goes for a hug from Clay's mom. I said she's a better woman than me. Because I would not be hugging any damn buddy. My mom's like, but the mom didn't do anything. I said, I don't care. I'm not hugging nobody. I'm not hugging nobody that has anything to do with him. I'm not. I'm just nuts. <laughs> I'm that petty. I'm not hugging the mama. Get your son. <laughs> go get your son. You go hug your son. Okay? I, I don't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with that. Your son just told me, no, ma'am. I ain't got no, not a hug, not a handshake for anybody sitting on the other side of my family on this side. Of the damn wedding aisle. So AD says to her mom and sisters that he wasted her effing time. She's like, I'm so confused. And I'm sat there thinking like, there's no way you could be confused because the man told you from every damn episode or in every damn episode, he is probably gonna cheat and he's not ready for this. He has told her, he has told her time and time again, she chose to ignore it or think that she is gonna be able to convince him otherwise. You know, her family tries to console her, but she just needs a minute and she's freaking out. So then she calls him an effing idiot. But then when I watched it back, I'm like, is she calling him an effing idiot or is she calling herself an effing idiot? I'm not really sure. 333. It was really at this point I realized AD's self-esteem is in the pooper. I think that's why she works so hard on her body because she knows that externally, top to bottom, she looks fine, but internally, she has surgery that needs to be done. AD is feeling like she wasn't enough for Clay and her family's consoling her and telling her, it's not that you weren't enough for him, it's that he's not enough for you. You're always gonna be enough. But this is a pattern in AD's relationships. That's because she keeps purposefully picking the wrong man. She keeps purposefully saying like she wants to fix these people and she knows it about herself and she's still not doing anything about it. She's still ignoring the red flag. And we know this because she admitted it to us. And so because of this, this is why this happened. I think she needed to experience it on this magnitude, maybe experience this level of, I don't know, embarrassment, um, discomfort to finally take time and heal and figure out why her self-esteem is so low and how she can get to a place where her self-esteem is not low. And after this experience, she'd be real damned if she didn't take this experience and actually do the soul searching she needs to do so that this never happens to her again. Cause this happened to her on national television. She's been dealing with this kind of man privately for a long time and experiencing hardships in relationship. She always leaves the relationships it seems like feeling less than because she's not found somebody that's pouring into her cup. She's always ready to pour into the person's cup and people are gonna take advantage of that, okay? So she needs a single season, okay? A long one, a self-discovery season, okay? She needs a, a, a Jesus season. <laughs> um, she needs to do some reflecting and she needs to do the work. The same work that she was up on that damn altar telling Clay that he did the work, she needs to go to the therapist and do the work. So of course, 
Clay's mom tells him, if in your heart you were not 100% there, then you should never cross that line, that marriage line. Of course, his dad supports him in his decision as well. His dad reassures him that he is proud of him. So at this point, we are with Clay in his confessional and Clay starts talking about 80s finances and how he's like not clear on her finances and that's an important thing for him. And this was never brought up before, so this is new information to us. I know AD had stated that she was into real estate, but I guess she ain't closed on her first house yet and get that first house commission, girl. Cause the way that Clay's making it sound is like, AD ain't got no damn money. And I'm just like, okay. So he's not trying to keep her. He, he's not trying to have her be a kept wife. <laughs> he don't want to be a sugar daddy husband. He wants to make sure that she has her money in order. But if that was one of the deciding factors, I mean, that should have been a conversation that we should have seen. He also said he's not feeling deeply in love. And so those are the re reasons he decided he's gonna say no. So then Clay looks for AD and he asks her if she's okay. She's all dramatic and she's like, is that the kind of question to ask a person? <laughs> And I'm just like, okay, AD, we know you're not okay. You know what the hell he meant. You okay? It's a bizarre question to ask someone. <laughs> yeah. This scene very much gave the office, like, honestly. <laughs> he apologizes again, and then he reiterates the fact that this was a game time decision, and he can't give her 100%, and tells her that she wouldn't want that, right? And again, He's prepared her for this this entire time. We're not shocked at home. We are not shocked. We clocked that this was gonna happen. The first couple to get engaged at, at the beginning of the show is the couple that gets married at the end of the show. Pretty much what Clay started telling AD was that he cannot make a decision to marry somebody off of a two week fling is what he pretty much, th that's what I heard. That's not what he said, but that's what I heard, okay? I heard it through a filter. <laughs> the way he said it made it sound like this was just a fling. First of all, it was longer than two weeks. That's the first thing. Secondly, if you wanted traditional dating, then do traditional dating. This is not traditional dating. So he says to her that he loves her and then tells her that he's not ready. And he tells her that she is perfect. And he also tells her that he's not a husband. Sir, we know because you didn't say I do, okay? And he tells her he's not rejecting her, even though it feels like that, it looks like that, and it's quacking like that. It's not a duck is what he said. He said, I'm not rejecting you. Has the audacity to ask for a hug. I said, now you one of them niggas. I'm so sorry, can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? No! And then look at AD, dumb. Hug? Uh-uh. No, ma'am. No. And then AD is saying, I love you. Not the, the hug in the head grip, girl. Netflix don't let you screenshot. I gotta take a picture of my phone. Like, if a man did this to me and asked me for a hug afterward, sir, I'm gonna punch you in your trachea. You can get a punch in your trachea. Don't ask me for no hug. I'm getting violent. <laughs> I get violent. So then he starts kissing her on her nose like she a damn pet. And then claims he's gonna do therapy and he's gonna get right for her, sir. She bet not get back with this man after all that. No, ma'am. No. Cause that's what she said she wasn't gonna do. That's what she said she wasn't gonna do. So if she were to allow him to go to therapy and do the work and then circle back around when he feels that, no. He needs to understand that he lost her, okay? She needs to make sure that she don't circle back. What are you supposed to do? I guess you gotta run away from me. <laughs> so, uh, oh my God, so it was so sad, it's breaking my heart. That was just so fucking love. It was a lot. But Andy, I'm telling you, like, I'm going to put the work in. I'm going to go to therapy, all that stuff, like, all that stuff I said, you know? Tiny violin. Part of what he's struggling with, he struggles with. Girl, they end up panning to Clay's dad and mom having a conversation, which I didn't think we were going to get to see. This was really good TV, okay? Netflix did their thug fizzle. And so Clay's mom confronts the dad about his infidelity. And so she's telling him, listen, Clay took a lot of his childhood to that altar. His concerns around you and us and whatever, he took it with him and it's a problem. And I was gagged because his mom started talking about how a lot of the things that Clay was exposed to, she had no idea until this process began. I said, so you're telling me that his mom knew that the dad was cheating, but she didn't know that Clay was going on the damn infidelity trips with him. And 
Clay didn't tell his mom until he knew he was going on TV and that it was going to get exposed on TV. So he decided he's going to have to tell his mama. And so the mom is now confronting the dad about it. And of course, the father turns into victim of the freaking year. And I'm just like, this is so classic. He starts going on about, you know, I didn't have the best role models. And she's like, I know, I know. But that's beyond the point. That is beyond the point. When you don't have good role models, you become a good role model. You show and prove to your parents and their parents and whoever made the example for you that this is how you do it. By not doing what they did. By not being a deadbeat, by not being a cheater, by not being a liar, by, by not being a manipulator, whatever it is that they have, that they did, that ruined your childhood, you make sure you don't do it and ruin your kid's childhood. Instead, the man turned around and was bringing the boy on the damn infidelity trips when he was talking about how his father was there, but he wasn't present. Okay, well, you did the same thing, baby. Okay, so I'm annoyed when the dad turns into the damn victim because, sir, you are grown. Okay, you're not a victim, you're not a child. You're grown and you make conscious decisions. So take some accountability and shut the hell up. And so Clay's mom is like, it's very evident that their son wants a long-term relationship, a, a long-term love, which is why he came on this show or started doing this process. And then the father interjects and he's like, well then maybe he needs to meet somebody like you. Maybe he needs to meet someone like his mama. And he was smirking child. I said, oh, this man think he still got it. And he wants that old thing back because one thing about it, his mom is very cute. She's a cute lady. I could just tell that back in her day, she was, she had it going on, okay? She was a beauty queen. When he said to the mother, he needs to meet somebody like you. He needs to meet somebody like his mama. She said, you met me, but you weren't good to me. I said, you better clock it, okay? You better tell him, ma'am, okay? You met me, but you were not good to me, and we're not going to sit here and pretend like you were. Because to me, when the father said that, I felt like he was saying, because the mom put up with the infidelity for so long, Clay needs to meet somebody that's going to deal with it too. That ain't how this go. And this is why the father is problematic. Clay actually needs to cut his daddy off, but that's another story. It's another story for another day. Now, when she said this to him, he couldn't do nothing but agree because he already know he wrong. She then said, we're going to end the conversation here. I said, that's right. Take control and walk away. Because she said, yes, we're divorced. But I'm just finding stuff out and it still hurts because I left you for these reasons. I didn't know this was going on behind my back and you were involving our child. That's crazy, you know, and now we're here. And now my child is struggling in the love department because he saw his daddy be nasty to his mommy. What you gonna do about that, sir? Y'all both need to be going to the damn lady together. So back in the dressing room, AD clocks Clay's teeth and tells him straight up that he used her in this experience to learn about himself and that it's not fair. And so he apologizes to her and asks her if he has to leave. Yeah, sir, you need to go immediately before she punches you in your damn trachea. <laughs> She shook her head yes, and then he kissed her again, and then he took off like a thief in the night that he is. And so in confessional, AD is breaking down, and she's just like, I keep doing so much for these men, and it's just never enough. And so again, single season AD. AD needs to be single and stay single and learn to love herself from the ground up because she damn well knew that this man was a fixer-upper. She thought he was Kristoff from damn uh, Frozen. A little bit of a fixer-upper. Well, how does the song go? <laughs> and so it looks like in the process, Clay did learn a lot about himself and AD did a lot of the bulk of the work for the next lady that comes along, but he still got a lot of work to do and he needs to stay single as well because we don't need him out here damaging folk. And that's exactly what it's gonna be because he did not kick this cheating demon. Okay, he did not kick the cheating demon. It's still scratching and itching on his back. The right clueless woman is going to fall for the okie dokie. And so AD says she can't force him or beg him or drag him to pick her. And then she said she's done, which made my heart full because I really don't want her to circle back. If we go to the reunion on the 13th and I see that these two done made up, I'm gonna be pissed. Okay, I don't, I'm gonna be pissed. But I think the public dragging will be a little too intense. She wanted to deactivate her damn Instagram <laughs> if she got back with Clay. The other thing is, when the reunion comes, if they're not asking the right questions, I'm gonna also be very upset. They, they never ask the right questions at the damn reunion, but we won't see. And so, to conclude, of course Netflix wanted to, us to see this happily ever after moment, so Johnny 
and Amy, of course, did tie the knot. They did get married. And so now when we watch this back, I think they'll probably be a year into their marriage. And so we'll see, you know, how things are with them. I hope they do not get asked about no damn babies because you already know that was their struggle. And so at the reunion, if Vanessa Lachey sits there and asks them about children, I'm going to be annoyed. Okay. I'm going to be annoyed. Okay. I'm going to write her a personal comment on her Instagram and tell her to STFU about these damn babies. Okay. Because the truth of the matter is, as a mom, you'll just never get paid enough for that, okay? You will never be paid enough to be a mom, okay? <laughs> never, ever, ever. You think that the reason that my handle is I don't get paid enough for this because I get paid enough for this, baby? There's nothing in this world that could really pay me enough. There's nothing, okay? Especially not motherhood. Motherhood is chill. I know y'all seen the crack on the iPad. It wasn't there the last time I filmed, was it? Okay, that's what I mean when I say I don't get paid enough for this because I didn't break my own iPad. But these kids, these kids. So Vanessa, don't be over there asking these people about no damn children. They break my chargers. They break my iPad. They break their own stuff. Dolls missing clothes. What else? I can't have nothing. Nice. I gotta lock my room door, okay? Like, don't ask these people about no kids. It's not time for that. <laughs> Let them live their best life. Let them travel a little bit, Vanessa. Please, don't ask them about the kids. Leave them alone. Mind your own womb, ma'am. Because they got like 50, 11 kids, right? They got the same kid, the amount of kids as me or they have more. They got like three, four kids. Leave the people alone. Please, I beg you. Okay, they like their iPad. They, they don't want their iPad broken. Yeah, all right? On a Wednesday. Tuh. On a Wednesday. Okay, girl. It's another story for another day. <laughs> I love you all so much. Tell me what you're feeling about this season. I will see you guys for the reunion. I don't know what I'm gonna wear for the reunion, but I hope you guys liked my wedding gown. <laughs> I love you all so much and we'll definitely see you in the next one.